Hey girls, what's up and welcome back to Go YouTube. Today I'm so excited because a while ago I went with my whole family to see the movie Clifford the Big Red Dog. And when I found out that it was available to buy and rent on digital, I was so excited. So of course we had to buy it and we watched it again. So I thought, how could I make this into a video for you guys? Obviously I can't talk to Clifford the Big Red Dog himself. So I thought the closest I can get to that is of course talking to somebody who looks after puppies. So I have here Julie and Kate from Assistance Dogs Australia and they're puppy educators and we'll be talking to them today. Let's get into it. So, Brad. How big is he gonna get? That depends, doesn't it? On what? On how much you love him. I wish we were big and strong and the world couldn't hurt us. Hi guys, so you guys are from Assistance Dogs Australia. So can you tell us a little bit about that and a little bit about yourselves? Okay. Uh, so um, Assistance Dogs Australia is an organization which raises um, assistance dogs to be then put with people with disabilities, which can include autism, post-traumatic stress disorder, or someone with a physical disability who may be in a wheelchair. And they also do um, educational support dogs that go into schools and uh, help with, with children um, or in the school areas. And so we're puppy educators, so this means we help train the dogs for a year, which is pretty exciting. So we do all the fundamental basic training. Um, <laughs> and so that's what we do. So what made you guys want to become puppy educators and how did you get involved? Um, my godmother. She actually has been training assistance dogs for over 10 years, maybe. And so I used to go up all the time on Queensland and the holidays up to Queensland. And ever since I was a little girl, she's taught me how to train the dogs. And I've grown up in my holidays, just helping train them. And then when COVID started, we thought maybe we could do one of our own. Yeah, so that was, um, yeah, two years ago now. So how long have you guys cared for puppies? Like not just with the Assistance Dogs of Australia, but just in general? Um, so we have been doing it for two years. Um, we've just um, come up to the second end of the second year. We've had two dogs in that time. Um, we've had a boy called Brookie and uh, he was a black Labrador. And we've got a beautiful girl called Bravo at the moment. And she is a yellow, Labrador Golden Retriever Cross. So what's a typical day in the life of a puppy educator like? Um, a lot of it involves, so I, mum and I, because we're co-ed sharers or co-sharers, um, I do the morning. So in the morning I wake up, give her breakfast, um, take her out of her crate, and then mum does when I'm at school, so. Uh, yes, during the day um, I take her, sometimes we have training classes uh, and we have a a supervisor that helps um, give us the skills to be able to train the dogs. So we might go to a puppy class and do a training session or I might take uh, the puppy out to somewhere where they can be exposed to different environments like maybe to the shops or um, you know to look at trains at a train station or on a bus um, and then we uh, do skill training throughout the day and of course they have to be exercised. So. Um, you know, one of us will be taking her for a walk during the day at least once and, um, you know, we'll throw balls and things in the afternoon uh, just to keep her exercised. So, yeah. yeah, it's little bits and pieces all throughout the day, but um, very rewarding. Nice. So I have a dog myself and sometimes training her can be very, very difficult. So what are some of the challenges you guys face? Um, well, every pup obviously is very unique and have their own characteristics. So I guess um, a lot is just in how that pup is as their character. So for example, Bravo, she's quite an anxious puppy. So that's a lot. That means you've got to take a lot more time when you social when you socialize with her. I think you've got to be a lot more patient and put a lot more work into maybe just taking her out and sitting down and watching the cars go past. Or you have some really confident dogs who you don't need to spend too long with that and you might just need to focus doing loosely walking. So it's all about their different unique personalities. Nice. So do you guys have like some sort of checklist that you need to complete before you can hand the dogs over? 
Um, so all of the dogs need to learn some basic uh, socialization and some basic skills. And once we've got those skills, uh, you know, down, the dogs then have to learn how to be able to do them for a longer period of time. And then um, with things, distractions happening around them. So for example, um, if we're looking at how to, to sit, if you take them to the shopping center, what happens there? Oh, just, sorry. Um, when you take them to the shopping center, because there's a lot of, um, you got to practice going under. So that's a main part is when you're sitting at the shopping center and you're maybe eating some food, the dog has to learn to go under a chair, which is something that um, they have to be able to take or be able to sit um, for over 30 seconds on you and on the handler and not focused um, getting too uh, worked up around the surrounding environment. Yes, and so once they've learnt the, the skills and they can do them for you know a longer period of time and they can do them with distractions happening all around them, um, when they go to advanced training, then the um, trainers will be able to take those skills and you know, use them and um, make them more fine-tuned for someone with a disability. So after the puppy's time with their adoptive family is over, where do the puppies go next? So the puppies go to advanced training, which is located in Waterfall um, in New South Wales. And so this is where they are put, um, it's like kennel sort of, and they have um, professional trainers who go and do, I guess, advanced training course. So this can include, it's just like marvelous things that are suited to do their pet. So this can include that they learn maybe how to pick something off the ground, it on your lap or they might be able to take things out of the washing machine learn how to open and close doors press the um, button at the lights so they they go along and they learn their advanced training which will is suited to whoever they pet. Yeah, so do you guys ever become kind of attached to the puppies because it must be very hard you know having them with you and then when your time is over having to say goodbye I think the hardest, it is obviously very hard because you know you raise them from being eight weeks every year and you spend a lot of time and effort into them. But I think you've got to, once you've seen the amazing final outcome of how much they can change someone's life, I think that's the only really real reason you're so easily able to give a, your puppy up because you can see the amazing change that they enlist. Yeah, I have to admit, you know, there was tears when we took. Um, our first dog off to um, the advanced training centre uh, and we had to keep watching videos um, about people whose lives have changed so dramatically um, because of Assistance Dogs Australia to make us feel uh, happy knowing that this was just part of their, their journey and they were going on to really make someone's lives. Yeah, so are you guys ever able to actually reunite with the puppies that you've cared for down the line? Um, we were lucky enough when they're in advanced training, because we are in Sydney, um, before COVID hit, we were able to go in and pick up our, um, our first dog, Brookie, and we were able to bring him home for the weekend. And it was uh, at a time when we also had Bravo. So it was great. He was able to be her little mentor. Yeah, her puppy mentor. And so, um, you know, she was only, oh, maybe about three months old and, and he was, you know, over a year. and. We were able to get him to help learn some skills, which is fantastic. Um, and then we also get updates, don't we? Updates, which are so cute. And so that's when we learned that, so when Brookie was in advanced training, we would get um, monthly or fortnightly, we would get a pup date on Brookie's progress and how he's going. So we would learn that, for example, he was best friends with his kennel mate, and we would just learn the little things that just, oh, that's good to know. And then when you, you also get pup dates on how they're going with, um, what, when he got paired, which was really good. Yeah, so once um, the, the, the pups have been placed with the person that they're going to be helping, um, you get updates every so often, uh, you know, about what they're doing and how they've helped uh, change someone's life. So Brookie, for example. Brookie was paired with um, a 21-year-old boy with autism. And so this boy before had never actually left to go to the shops by himself before. Um, completely independent, but once he got paired with Brookie, I think he he was able to um, go to the shops. He went to the chemist, I'm pretty sure, by himself, which was yeah. at the age of 21 by himself, which is a big feat for him because 
Brookie helped him gain that independence. And from what I understand that he's hoping that he might be able to go to university and move out of home. And now that he has Brookie um, who helps with his you know, anxiety and helping him keep calm in certain situations, which may have been a bit overwhelming for him before, that he feels he um, might be able to do those things now in the future. Oh, that's very, very nice. So how do you guys know if you're a good fit to become a puppy educator? Um, well, it's great that we're a, a team. It, um, it means that we've got uh, two sets of hands and that, you know, we can help, you know, Kate can do all the, the, the work in the holidays and before and after school. And, um, and of course, I can help uh, during the day. So you do need to be able Someone that, yeah, and someone that's at home um, during the day. So if mum or dad works from home or um, is, you know, uh, around the house um, and can drive, because we do have to take them maybe to the, the bank and for puppy classes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you have to be willing to, to learn and to be able to have the dog inside the house. Um, you know, they're a little bit different to pet dogs, aren't they? Yeah, you've definitely got to adapt. So. Um, it's completely different mental state because you've got to be like, oh, the dogs can't be alone for more than three hours, and they've got to be have all these rules about dinner or um, what they can and can't do, so they cannot go on the couch. You know, they've got to learn all these manners, which you don't want to give an ill-mannered dog off to someone with a disability. So there's a lot that you've got to be um, careful, ready for, and to be very patient. It's a lot of patience. Yeah. But um, there's a really good um, test of a self self um, screening test on the Assistance Dogs Australia website. So you can go onto the website and it has a whole lot of questions that you can answer that will tell you if you're going to be um, a good fit to become a puppy educator. So cool. So do you guys have any nice memories that you can share with us about a puppy that you've had? Um, so Bravo, the one we have recently at the moment, she when in her litter of 10, they actually got to go to Studio 10 and go on TV and have an interview with um, the hosts, yes. And she even got to meet Dr. Chris Brown, which is a big, they're very exciting. I think that was Kate's highlight, not Bravo's Maybe. highlight. <laughs> Do you guys um, think quite, I was gonna say, it's quite fun because you can, um, you know, take them into a lot of situations when they're wearing their um, learner's jacket uh, that you don't normally get to go to with, with dogs. So, you know, she, she I've taken Bravo to school before. She. Oh, I've taken, I actually took um, Andrea's dog Bell to school before, and I took Brookie to school before. So um, that's a big experience. That's nice. So do you guys think this is something that you'll be doing for years to come? Um, so we, we have got Bravo probably for another two months, and then we hope to be able to take on our third puppy after that. So yes, we hope so. So Kate, what do you want to do once you finish school? Because you're obviously very young. So does it involve dogs or animals? Um, what I want to do when I'm older is definitely work with people with disabilities. And a lot of that has come from seeing how um, their lives can be changed just by such simple things like raising a dog and um, having them with, so, have, pairing them off. And I think that's a big thing is I want to work with kids with disabilities. So that's something I definitely want to do. But obviously working with dogs would be the dream for anyone really. Yeah, nice. So do you guys have any of your own pets living at home? Do you want me to grab them? I no, do. that's right. <laughs> yeah, we have two cats, um, Coco and Jinx. So they're beautiful. And, that, and then we just got Bravo, so. Nice. So lastly, can you guys tell us why you would recommend people looking into becoming puppy educators? Um, assistance dogs can't survive without volunteers. That's probably the most essential thing because they need to have someone to actually raise the puppies who then go off and get paired. So I, I, um, I feel like I would recommend because it is the most life changing and most rewarding experience I could ever recommend. I think it's changed a lot. I don't know, it's made our relationship even better and it's given a lot to talk about and a lot to a lot to learn. Like I've learned so much working with the dogs and it's honestly just been an amazing experience. Nice. Um, so thank you guys so much for letting me interview you. You guys were great. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed interviewing Julie and Kate. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a video and check out Clifford the Big Red Dog. Bye!